special thank you to Yo-Yo Doc on the Yo-Yo Expert forums, famously known as Dr. Mo or Maurice Chavez while well, on Yo-Yo Jam, who graciously purchased the plastic fulvia for me for Christmas. This video could not be done without him, and I am eternally grateful. Originally, this was supposed to be a review for an entirely different yo-yo. Like, a friend personally sent me a yo-yo from his collection explicitly for the sake of review. But uh, then a plastic version of that yo-yo was released, and it was a massive hit. I am, of course, talking about the plastic fulvia. I tried taking a picture of it, but I'm, I'm, bad at, <laughs> I'm bad at taking pictures. For reference, I was supposed to do a review on the TIE 7068 Fulvia. Things changed up. Uh, yeah, the plastic Fulvia dropped and immediately blew up. There's some lore behind this yo-yo. All over the yo-yo news, the plastic Fulvia starts with a molded blank, and then the yo-yo itself is machined out of the blank. So let's discuss the Fulvia. So this yo-yo is the first solo project from Luftwerk that's arguably really affordable. Yes, there's the Skyva, but that's marketed as a magic yo-yo collab. And it's also a six coming on seven year old design. Now, Luftwerk is known for using titanium a lot, and new blast techniques and collabing with COIW. Luftwerk makes really premium yo-yos, which unfortunately means that most people might never get a chance to use a Luftwerk yo-yo. Genuinely, the only Luftwerk yo-yos I'd played with before getting the bimetal fulvia sent to me was the Skyva. Luftwerk is just a really inaccessible brand for a lot of yo-yoers, so the plastic fulvia for a lot of people is going to be their first taste of Luftwerk. And man, I'm going to be dead honest. The hype that I've seen this yo-yo get is 100% warranted. So, let's get into the design of this yo-yo. This is a mold machined yo-yo, which I explained earlier. You get the blank and then do the thing and it pops out a machined plastic yo-yo. I think it's polycarbonate, but the spec sheets I checked don't say what material it is specifically, so I can't say for sure. But. This process leads to a very weird thing for me, which is a plastic yo-yo with no metal spacers. And as far as I can remember, I've never played with a plastic yo-yo that didn't have metal spacers. And it's a big boy. 59mm diameter and with a 46mm width makes this a very large plastic yo-yo. And the weight is surprising. I genuinely thought this yo-yo was going to measure in at about 65, 64 grams. It's 67.1 grams. And this cup is wild, by the way. The rims are massive. These are huge. And they just scoop out, which leads to like a pseudo double rim thing. I don't really think that's what that is, but if you're worried the inner part sticks out, it doesn't. It's flush with the outer rim. And then it's just a sheer drop straight into the hub. And then the profile is just very competitive looking. I see this profile and I immediately think of the Crash series from C3 Yo-Yo Design and the Tachyon from Yo-Yo Friends. Don't worry though, it's not sharp. The plastic fulvia is actually really comfortable and really catchable in the hand because of the big rims. Overall, this design is actually really competitive. It's a plastic yo-yo that defies standard plastic yo-yo convention. Plastic yo-yos can be a little anemic and unstable due to just how light plastic is. And the usual remedy of just adding a bunch of rim weight doesn't always work because after a certain point, you're not adding rim weight anymore. You're adding center weight. So the plastic fulvia is insane. It's really, really good. The presence on the string that the fulvia has makes it extremely maneuverable and controllable. The natural pacing of the plastic fulvia isn't anything crazy. It's got slightly above average pacing, but nothing that would feel unnaturally quick. In regards to speed combos, the presence it has on the string leads to it being able to execute very clean, quick speed combos very unobtrusively. And you know that unpleasant rim weighty feeling that a lot of yo-yos have? It's on this yo-yo. 
but it's one of the few cases I'll ever say that's actually beneficial to the play feel of the yo-yo. This is an extremely rare feeling I've had with a yo-yo. I've observed it one other time with a yo-yo. And that yo-yo was with the C3 Yo-Yo Design Galaxy Diver. On the plastic fulvia, it's less of a feeling of sluggishness and more of a present indication that you're doing a redirect or changing direction. It basically complements the play feel of the plastic fulvia and actually results in a good feeling rim weighted sluggishness on a yo-yo. A slight drawback to the plastic fulvia is that sometimes the size can get in the way and lead to you needing to play a little more unnaturally than maybe you normally would. If I'm doing a trick where I need to kind of weave the yo-yo or drop the yo-yo between strings, I, I need to compensate accordingly. So tech is going to be a little more tight and difficult. Nothing basic practice and compensation can't fix, but the plastic fulvia can be slightly obtrusive. Power is solid. I don't have much to comment on regarding the power. It's nothing that makes me go, oh, it bites back, or where's the spin power? It's just maybe a tiny bit powerful. I'm not sure what else to say. Stability is the biggest oddity on this yo-yo. If you mess up in just the right way, there's no recovering. The yo-yo will just flop and die. But like most of the time, it's just fine. Sometimes it's impressively stable and finishes the most jank, wacky combos unscathed. Sometimes it dies because a string rubs the wall for a, a pico second. It's really weird, and I don't really get why it happens, but it's nothing I'd say is detrimental. And then there's Zontals. The Plastic Fulvia is the best pure plastic yo-yo I have used for Zontals. Moving on. There's only one yo-yo that I can really compare to the Plastic Fulvia that I own. And that yo-yo is the Speedaholic XX. The Speedaholic XX is kind of the golden standard for competitive plastics. People rave over it and it's often considered the best plastic that money can buy. Whenever you ask someone, hey, what's a plastic yo-yo that plays like a full metal yo-yo? They usually say the Speedaholic XX. I will be frank. I think the plastic fulvia is better. The Speedaholic XX is an incredible plastic yo-yo. I thoroughly enjoy playing with it, but it's a lot sometimes. I find it can be difficult to control because it's so fast and light feeling. The Speedaholic XX is kind of unwieldy in comparison to the plastic fulvia. Overall, the Speedaholic XX is faster. The natural pacing of the Speedaholic XX is really fast while the plastic fulvia is just quick. Speed combos roll out faster but are messier with the Speedaholic XX than on the Plastic Fulvia. Then, there's the main reason I believe the Plastic Fulvia is just better. An unwieldy yo-yo can eventually become natural and easy to control. It takes time. But the Plastic Fulvia is just a more stable yo-yo. At least in my experience. It's not that the Speedaholic XX is unstable. It's not going to blow over and die because you abruptly stopped moving. But the plastic fulvia can just take it all better. The Speedaholic XX, with how unwieldy it is, in tandem with having slightly less stability, just makes it harder to do tricks with sometimes. This becomes apparent with Zontals. I just full stop prefer the plastic fulvia for Zontals. It feels more natural, it handles them better, I feel like I don't have to be as accurate and aware of my Zontals with the plastic fulvia compared to the Speedaholic XX. Between the two, the last nail in the coffin is that the Plastic Fulvia has consistent binds. Speedaholic XX has bind consistency problems for me. It's either really grippy and snags or doesn't bind with really clean binds. So I just think the Plastic Fulvia is better than the Speedaholic XX. They're both great plastic yo-yos that have similar performance to metal yo-yos. But like, listen to that again. They have similar performance to metal yo-yos. All things considered, this yo-yo is a really impressively performing yo-yo, but it's being judged against standard metal yo-yos for performance. And to be honest, it's not fair to compare this to a bimetal like the Hydrogen Crash or GTRJS. And though it is unfair to compare it to those bimetals, it's a great yo-yo. There is a slight problem with the construction, I think, though.
The bearing groove is all plastic, which can be risky for bearing seat maintenance. If this is polycarbonate, which it probably is, if you go in to clean the bearing seat with acetone, be extremely cautious and do not overdo it with the acetone. Acetone can be destructive to polycarbonate. I needed to go in and clean the bearing seat. Mine came in dirty and gooped up. No biggie. It happens. I live in Utah. Our atmosphere is 20% dust, 20% coal, 20% copper particulates, and 40% breathable oxygen. Stuff comes in dirty sometimes, but if you need to clean the bearing seat with acetone, do it carefully. Dampen up a Q-tip with some acetone. Not dripping, just damp. And you just want to rub the metal bearing seat with the Q-tip to clean the bearing seat. Avoid the plastic bearing groove as best you can. If you touch the plastic bearing groove a little bit, it's not a huge deal if it's made really short brief contact, and as long as there's no pools of acetone in it basically, you should probably be fine. But other than that construction issue, the plastic fulvia is an incredible yo-yo that I have been thoroughly enjoying since I got it. The binds are clean and consistent, it's nice, and it's, it's if you care about it, you know, it's smooth and plays really well. Currently, I think it's the best plastic that money can buy. If you're watching, Jeff, you did a great job. I'm sorry for interrupting your conversation with Mr. Thesis at Nats. You probably don't remember it, but I do. I didn't mean to be rude. Mr. Thesis is just a homeboy of mine. So, anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. Adios.